used to paddling like before, like with those paddles, they're going to stay closer to the surface, whereas, you know, you want a paddle that can reach down. So, in a boat like that, you know, you would have had, should have done everything to avoid every wave, you know, um, and set yourself up for absolutely the most conservative line. Well, that was the point of this was like a capabilities test yeah you see what the upper limit was because the past two times yeah it was very low summer low and then the other time was like medium yeah i had the labels it was well, like i think you would probably three, be better off if you want to get good in that one seven is low threes to get out here at the high levels high over the lines but, but practicing that at lower levels right and when it's more benign or maybe even Weaverton ledges. Right. And well, that's how the first two times were. The one was, uh, I think it was 1.8 Harvest Ferry Gauge. It was the yeah. summertime low. The other one from a few years ago was like a medium level, nothing too high, yeah. pretty easy stuff. And then this one, just shy of five. I mean, it's at a good look, but I think it's about four, six, four, eight right now. Yeah. Pointer Ox Gauge. Yeah. But uh, this was definitely the highest. But like you said, it wasn't probably an inflatability issue with it being a little low on the one valve. It was probably the, I mean, one chamber. It was just like the physics of the I, of I the conversion. I don't think that would have made that much of a difference. Because I, I hit it, I tried to hit it at the exact most aggressive line yeah. of that, that conversion wave at the rooster tail there. Yeah. So the point was not to miss it. Like I was, because I almost missed it. I took one corrective stroke. Yeah. And, um... I lined up exactly as I do when I'm going through it, you know, in the creeker in the longboat, and then uh, yeah. I hit it 100% on because I wanted to, I wanted a full on force. Yeah. I think it was just too much, a oh, too much inertia, right, coming at me. that thing at this level um, I, I just would have done everything possible to avoid features and take the most conservative line but you in that thing you would have had to pass the paddle <laughs> as fast as you could uh, you know, to get the right lines and best lines I'll try it someday yeah good point I lined up 100% right which is good because I had to make two corrective hit it right because I didn't want to spin out. Yeah. I didn't want to spin out and miss the main line and feel like it was cheating. Yeah. Me. Well, the easiest line, I kind of think, start just above white first. Start slightly right of center, but then go angled left and aim for uh, kind of like the eddy on the left at the bottom. But, you know, right. that would be like at the utmost speed limit of that. You know, that thing isn't good for carving, and... No, this thing's like a rubber ducky out there. Yeah. 
And plus, uh, aluminum motors would have helped. These plastic ones are too flimsy. Because yeah. you can feel the undertow once you get the full purchase in. Yeah. Did you get recirculated any? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I didn't mean underwater? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I mean, think, no. some hydraulics flush you straight out, others might hold you. I mean, my feet were getting kind of like kicked around a little bit, you know. Yeah, that's, that's what I think happened to Nancy. If she was cold and uh, her feet were hitting the bottom, even if she didn't get caught, you know, she might have gotten slowed down a little bit yeah. and went face first. I mean, it was kind of like bit. a and little... And then the next rocky rapids, she would have done a face pan. It was a little bit like uh, Little Falls and then Mad Dog, like once you feel those churning undercurrents. Yeah. But it wasn't like, it wasn't a washing machine like where it was really aggressive. I mean, I easily kicked out of it. Yeah. It was just getting out of that, that main, the main turbulence of the middle line. Yeah. Trying to get, you know, get to shallower where there was less turbidity, you know, so you, where the current slower towards shore. Yeah. It just took a long time to break that, to break that line to get over. Yeah. So I was trying to get over before that hit that second ledge. Yeah, I, I think to really make White Horse right, uh, somewhere up there to get the speed to maneuver, you would have had to turn your boat almost upstream, and then, you know, paddle over to get your line the on point. the left, and then come down. But you'd want to be angled left. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I started really far up, halfway towards the confluence, just so I could hit that tongue right at the V. Yeah. Because I knew if I started any more towards the left, yeah. everybody took me down that cheat line and missed the whole thing. Yeah. I don't know, the first time I saw you, you seemed to be taking waves pretty good in that. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Yeah. The one O-ring popped off on the way down, so I had to hold it extra tight. And oh, wow. It just didn't... Uh, An O-ring? Like, what, that stabilizes the oar. What kind of swims? Drift. So drift is one of the three swims? Uh, yeah, or I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you can put effort into a swim, but to, if the rapids are pushing you around, yeah, then you really can't make headway. Right. And probably the only way you're really going to make headway in a rapid like that would be you can't wear a skirt, and maybe you, some people would want to even ditch the vest. Um, and uh, you'd have to be aggressive. Um, you know, like at swim team, we used to do what were called under overs, and you swim one lap all all the way underwater, and then you get a breath at the wall on the far end, and then you absolutely sprint back. And uh, cool. yeah, what are the other two swims? I see, there's three. I mean, it's not official, oh. but you know, a good aggressive swim. The river's not going to push you as much if you're coming up on a hydraulic. You know, you put your face down and you reach down and you know you work your way through it. You know, you're navigating the rapid. And if an eddy line comes up, uh, you know, if you could do the butterfly stroke to get over it. But in all reality, I think one percent of kayakers would be that kind of swimmer. They had to Maybe. Come. Two percent. They probably came from like a swimming background, club swim team, but high school, middle school, what kind of thing. Yeah, but like around here, uh -huh. I'd probably say ninety-nine percent of all would have substantially less cardiovascular than any other cocker who is just moderately physically active. That's a good point. And uh, yeah, so if they're also going to drink their beer a lot. Uh, and live that lifestyle, it's going to add up. When I first started, Lower VO2 max. I was probably still swimming two miles a day. Good. Two miles a day and maybe 55 minutes. That helps a lot for cold swims out here, you know, yeah. with the endurance. Well, there's and a boundary line hypothermia. where uh, professional swimmers and competitive swimmers, you know, where they're doing three miles a night, they actually like the water at 60 degrees, which for a lot of people who aren't aggressive, you know, in a speedo, might start to give them hyperthermia after 20 minutes. Good point. And, uh, you know, so they're pumping out the body heat big time. And um, so, uh, yeah, and if you did a true sprint swimming, 
uh, you know, yeah, you're going to be making a little bit more body heat, uh, but the water's going to be taking it out of you. Uh, that swim reminded so, me a little bit of uh, the Savage Swim. Yeah. You know, put in the raft lift. Yeah. It was a little bit like that when I came up and the raft was on top of me, and then uh, just being in those uh, that series of... Um, yeah. It's not really standing waves, but just breaking waves, like coming up and trying to get an air, yeah. a breath, and then it comes right, smacks down on top of you again. Yeah. Kind of, I can see how re repetitively that can lead to like flush drowning, especially on say like long stretches of savage without getting ashore and stuff like that. Yeah. Because every time it was coming up, it was like swoosh, 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 and then just like I said, trying to get too short to where the, the current was slower was that was a lot. Of, I mean, it was taxing. Yeah. You know, and that was interesting. I wasn't expecting it. I really wasn't. But yeah. the uh, well, I, that's what happened to me on the Tohegan. It just felt so sudden that it was kind of unnerving. And as I went down the river, I uh, I was trying to do the breaststroke, and there were some rocks below me, and I knew I'd bump them, and my knees would be a little sore, but it wouldn't be like knocking off my kneecaps. And right. uh, but at the takeout, we didn't have the shuttle reins, so I stood for like an hour and a half in blowing cold and I was wet and I just got stiff and I think that's most of the reason why my knees felt bad for six months after it's a long time yeah. yeah well when I go to Savage and pretty much is that one that's the only one where I wear both the knee pads yeah. and the elbow pads um, and then other stuff I will, I guess, me, first time at Sony Creek, but then since then I haven't. Yeah. But I always wear the uh, knee pads and elbow when I go to Savage. Yeah. It's okay. I mean, this was just a test. Yeah. Because it's, right. it's not designed for whitewater, but I've yeah. done it a couple times, so it was just kind of a skill set, and just wanted to see what I could handle, what it could handle. Yeah. That's why I wanted you to safety, so thank you yeah. very much. Yeah, so many people think, well, if you can do it in a hard boat and then right. inflatable, then, uh, you know, and people do make it down in inflatable, then a newbie can do it. <laughs> and then, you know, it's not that big a deal, but... I wanted the challenge because I can't... I wasn't able to use both oars at the same time, so I had to compensate yeah. with each each side, and uh, just because yeah. of the flinginess of it, well, and also the yeah. length, so... You it couldn't was, use both at the same time. Well, it wasn't it wasn't lining me up like it was kind of like I had yeah. to do one hard stroke on one side, and then a reverse on the other. Yeah, every time you do that, the whole boat is going to rotate a right. little bit. And that's what happened. I almost missed a line going in. I did a big spin. Yeah. So then I just was that's like, that's only good for guide. Those oars are only good for guiding the boat a little bit, yeah. or orienting it, or being on flat water, basically. It was good for, I did low water needles, um, summer lows, and yeah. it was like 1.7 at the Warren Harper's Ferry gauge was still up. Yeah. And that was great oh, there. Oh, horse. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And any kind of rocky creeks, you know, steeper mountain creeks, yeah. I have some good flush on. There's just trade-offs, like some places, I don't know, it, it, it's going to mess with your rigging a little bit. You're going to want a bigger yeah. boat with knee pads. And sometimes I'd wonder, you know, if you're getting out of the boat, and, you, know, you, you know, let's say you're swimming and there's sticks and stuff, you know, would they tend to catch more? Good point. Yeah. So That's... probably built-in knee pads to your wetsuit, you know, would be the best. Yeah. Yeah, and part of this today was I haven't had this, you know, this raft out in, um, let's see, Labor Day weekend yeah. when I inadvertently ran into you down here. Yeah. That was the last time I had it out because I've been waiting a long time to get to, uh, you know, the four to five foot range when I haven't been anywhere else. So part of that was a little bit of rust, but it, I mean, it really wasn't too much because I mean, it came back very naturally. Yeah. It wasn't like getting back into a play boat after, you know, several months out. But it was still a really good learning experience. We'll get some more gate rating. Yeah. Know. All right. Cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's nice to master another boat and have that technique. And, and that's that what I wanted. A little, a little change up, you yeah. know, something fun. But it's it's going to be 
much harder to eddy out in a boat like that. Very. And you can't use it to really carve. Um, Good point. Yeah, in, in some situations, yeah, it can scoot right over a rock, and you can just do a rock pivot. You know, if the rocks are smooth and not too far out. It's kind of like you, you uh, Glenn and Annette did at Tohegan. There's a big rock, and you guys spun around it and came oh, down. Yeah. 